What about if you have a polyprotic acid or a diprotic acid? Well, you can turn that, you can do a titration of a uh, polyprotic acid or a diprotic acid in this example, and you can find out the Ka's of each acidic proton. Remember, each proton has a, um, a Ka, and so you can go here, okay, here's the first, basically they look like titration curves on top of each other. So here's the titration curve for the first proton, and then here's the titration curve for the second proton. All right. And then you would just go, okay, so here's the equivalence point, it occurs whatever that is, what's that, 26? Yeah. So 13, we'll do this pretty fast, we don't have to do it. So 13, the first Ka, pKa1, hey, that's about 2. So pKa1 equals 2. And then here's the equivalence point at 50, but it's really from that point to that point. All right, so, eh, so what is that, 25? We'll just say 25, so 12.5, somewhere around right here. And then you go up, whoop, and then you go over, whoop. pKa2 is around 8.2. So you can find the Ka's for both acidic protons in one titration. I bet you're like really sad that you didn't do a diprotic acid for when you determined a Ka. That would have been more fun, twice as much fun. Two Ka's, one titration. But then, like, then it's a, you know, it's a quick road. Okay? Then you're like, hey, what about a triprotic acid? Let's do that. And then you were like, oh, EDTA, I heard that has four acidic protons. Why don't we do that? And then, oh, it's all downhill from there. Just chasing that Ka.